Welcome back to our assigned parts video series. In the last video, we took a look at the detailed drawings for the parts that we will be manufacturing in this video series, including some of the tolerances associated with their part features. In this video, we are going to focus on common types of measuring instruments that are used to check and validate these types of precision tolerances. Those instruments range from rulers and tape measures to calipers to micrometers. Starting with the least accurate, we have the tape measure, a common tool that most of us have used many times. When using a tape measure, the, the, the accuracy is typically around plus or minus one thirty-second of an inch, which is roughly plus or minus thirty thousandths of an inch. When using a pair of calipers to make our measurement, the accuracy is usually in the range of plus or minus three thousandths of an inch which is roughly 10 times more accurate than a normal ruler or tape measure. Finally, when using a micrometer to make our measurement, maybe we're, using, or maybe we're measuring a component like a precision bearing, when using a micrometer to make our measurement, the accuracy will be somewhere in the range of plus or minus three-tenths of a thousandth, or .0003 inches, which again is about 10 times more accurate than the calipers. If we take another look at the tolerance table for the parts that we're we'll manufacturing and look at some of the dimensions on our drawings, we will see that the typical tolerances range from about plus or minus five thousandths of an inch up to around plus or minus twenty thousandths of an inch, which falls very well into the range of the calipers. Since the calipers can measure about, can have accuracy around plus or minus three thousandths of an inch, that will be adequate for the majority of component features. Uh, on these parts. The calipers are also very easy to use as we will explain in the second half of this video. And finally, they're going to be a lot more affordable than using uh, micrometers. Later in the semester, we will have another video that covers some more advanced measurement uh, techniques, in which case we will come back to micrometers and investigate uh, how they compare to, uh, to calipers and the types of situations in which you would prefer to use a micrometer over a caliper. Next, let's talk about the three different types of calipers, vernier, vernier dial, and digital. Vernier calipers are so named because they possess a small, movable, graduated scale that allows us to piece together the overall reading shown on the calipers. The main benefit to vernier calipers is that they are the most affordable among the three types of calipers, and they are also the most reliable because they only depend on one moving part and do not require batteries. The primary downside to vernier calipers is that they take longer to read than the other two styles of calipers. For the rest of this video series, we are going to abbreviate vernier dial calipers as simply dial calipers so they don't get confused with vernier calipers. The principal advantages of dial calipers are that they are easier to read than vernier calipers and they do not require batteries to function like digital calipers. The cons to dial calipers are that they are more fragile and expensive than vernier calipers because of the precision rack and pinion gear set that allows the dial to rotate as the carriage is moved along the body of the calipers. The principal benefits to digital calipers are that they are the easiest to read among the three types and they can display imperial or metric units and quickly convert back and forth between the two. The primary cons to digital calipers are that they are more fragile than vernier calipers because of the electronics inside the instruments, and they are also reliant on a good battery to function. Next, let's talk about common components of a pair of dial calipers. Starting at the left side, we have the external jaws. At the top, we have the smaller internal jaws. Next, we have the dial indicator, and we have the indicator uh, a bezel adjustment nut. The portion of the calipers that slide left and right is called the carriage. Here we have the carriage lock screw, the carriage adjustment barrel, the body or beam of the calipers, at the bottom of the beam, we have the caliper scale. And finally, 
we have the caliper depth rod. Properly using calipers requires a little discipline because there are a few things you need to check each and every time. First, when you pick up the calipers, you want to open them and to wipe off the jaws that you are using with a clean rag to make sure there are no chips or oil or debris on them. Next, you want to <clears throat> gently close the calipers and make sure that the needle on the dial indicator returns to the zero. I like to open and close them gently two or three times to make sure that it repeats well. If the needle does not return to zero, clean the, jaw, the jaws a second time, reclose, and if necessary, loosen the bezel lock screw, rotate the bezel to the zero indicator position, and then resecure the lock screw. This, this technique or this process is called zeroing the calipers. Very important to make sure that we get an accurate measurement each time that we use the calipers. Next, we want to turn our attention to the workpiece that we're measuring. We want, to, we want to clean it off to remove any chips and debris. And we also want to carefully check that there are no burrs or rough edges that are uh, in, in the vicinity of our measurement that are going to cause an error in our measurement. After we've done those three things, we're ready to make our measurement. To do so, in this case, we're going to start with an external measurement. So I will open the caliper jaws. I'm going to slide the caliper jaws over the workpiece. I'm going to use the, uh, the, <clears throat> the, the, the barrel screw on the carriage to put pressure against the workpiece as I close the jaws. And then finally, I'm going to purposely rock the calipers to find the normal position, the position at which the jaws are perpendicular to the surface of my part. I can do that by watching the needle and find, finding the minimum position. So if I rock one way, start the, the, uh, the numbers start to decrease. If I continue in the same direction, then they increase. I back up and I can easily find my minimum. And that is going to be the position at which the jaws are perpendicular or normal to the part surface. And that's very important to obtain the accurate reading. A second type of measurement we can make using dial calipers is an internal measurement using the smaller internal jaws at the top of the calipers. To make this type of measurement, we start the same way. We first wipe off the jaws. Second, we'll check the zero on the calipers two or three times. In this case, we may desire to measure the internal hole size of this part. Before we can measure it, we need to clean it. So in this case, I just have a Q-tip. I'll clean it. And now we're ready to make the measurement. I'll insert the internal jaws into the hole. And now, as I open the calipers, I can apply a light amount of pressure and rock the calipers. And you'll see the same thing happening where I'm able to use the dial to determine when the calipers are normal to the uh, cylindrical hole surface. In this case, we're looking for the maximum value. Once we find it, we can record that value, and that would be the accurate size of the, uh, the hole using the internal jaws on these calipers. The third and final type of measurement that we can make uses the depth rod on the calipers. Perhaps this part is already installed and it cannot be removed. Um, in relation to its adjacent part, we could use the depth rod to measure the length of this shoulder or the length of this step, for instance. We extend the rod, we push the body against the, um, the surface of our part, and now the calipers will show us the accurate reading from one plane to the second plane on this step. Next, let's discuss how to read the dial calipers. The first portion of the measurement comes from the scale printed on the lower portion of the caliper body. The scale has a resolution of 0.1 inches, and the measurement is always read with respect to the reference edge on the left side of the movable carriage. In the case of the measurement shown on the calipers on the screen, 
you can see that the reference edge is well past the large one, which means we're larger than one inch, but we're not yet to the graduation mark on the small four. Therefore, the reading, the tense reading taken off the body of the calipers would be 1.3 inches. The rest of the reading comes from the dial indicator portion of the calipers. On this dial, each increment is one thousandth of an inch. That means the dial goes from zero all the way around to one hundred thousandths per revolution of the, of the, uh, the indicator needle, which is exactly the, the major um, increment distance on the body of the caliper. Reading the dial in the current position, we see that it shows about approximately 75 thousandths of an inch. So we add that reading to the base reading off the, uh, the scale on the body. And that gives us a result of 1.375 inches, which would be the complete and correct reading shown on these dial calipers. Now let's talk about one of the easiest mistakes to make whenever we are learning how to use dial calipers. Using the example shown on the screen, we can see the reading on the base portion of the calipers is 1.3 or 1.4. I can't tell based solely on the reference edge of the left side of the carriage. In this case, I have to, to, to obtain additional information from the reading shown on the dial indicator to determine which of these readings is correct, 1.3 or 1.4. We can see that the dial indicator currently points to 95 thousandths. Since we're not yet to the zero, that means we're not yet to fully to the increment next to the four on the base portion of the caliper body. In this case, the, the correct measurement shown on the calipers would be 1.395 inches not 1.495. If I open this so that the needle is exactly on the zero, then my reading would be 1.400 inches. And if I continue five thousandths past the zero, now my reading would be 1.405 inches. Okay, so anytime that you are very close to one of the major graduation marks on the body of the caliper, you have to pay extra attention to the dial to determine whether you are before or after that graduation mark. It's a very easy mistake for anybody to make whenever we're using dial calipers.